Um, first of the two lab sessions. All right, I'm just briefly going to go through very quickly both labs. Um, brief run through what you're going to be doing, and then getting um, people set up to start doing the actual lab work. And we've got the kit for four pairs, so we might even get most of this done this week anyway. Um, I also got up the front here, for anyone not able to do practical at any point, there's two um, exam style questions on this um, worksheet here for you to have a go at. I think I've probably got some work solutions to them somewhere as well, which I will find. I'll have a go at them first anyway. Okay? So. Lab one. Capacitors. All right. What you're going to do is use a variable DC supply, probably 10 volts. You've got it going to be issued with a variable one. You're going to be, you're going to be using that so that's you're able to, you'll be plugging leads into it. So I mean, um, uh, you'll see there's a reason why I'm telling you about the fact that that's plugged in in a minute. Okay. That's going to be connected to a voltmeter, right, like so, that has an internal resistance of one mega ohm. Yep. So it's a that's a digital meter that's got quite a low impedance compared to most meters. It's a cheap one. But it serves the purpose here. And then you're going to go and use a crocodile clips, connect your unknown value C, like that. Yeah? And there's a switch on the power supply, so you can turn it off and on and you're able to um, alter the voltage. Yeah. So what you'll do is, one, charge up to the null voltage, e.g. 10 volts. Okay. Two. At time you start a stopwatch. Disconnect. the plugs on supply, i.e. what you want to do is be, you only need to take one out, but you need to go like that and take that out. Switching it off um, is, is not okay, because what will happen is, what we want to happen is this capacitor that's charged up to 10 volts, or whatever you apply, we want that to discharge through that meter, through the one mega ohm of that meter, a known resistance. If we turn this supply off, we still the, the this power supply will be a secondary route through there through its internal output impedance. You'll discharge much quicker than you will with just the one mega ohm resistor. So the idea is we've got a discharge route through a, a known resistance so we can use that data within the formula formulae that you've got for capacitor discharge you can record voltage over time okay and then substitute the values that you get for that into the formula rearrange it and find out what C is because that's this C is the question mark in this case Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna need to, to take readings every so many seconds.
I'm going to say over a suitable period. In terms of what you know about the discharge cycle, and record in a table for reference. You don't need to do it. You, you could do it by charge and cycle, but it's more tricky to start from a known completely discharged position. Here, we know we can, we can adjust that DC power supply to, exa to an exact voltage and start from that exact voltage consistently. So the discharge cycle, for that reason, is better. And that either would work, but this is, this is the better way to go. All right? Yeah? So your volt, um, your, um, your volt may all be reading your volts all the time. But this capacitor that's charged up will do a discharge current back through through that meter, giving you a read and a voltage, but also being a known resistance to your circuit that you can use for calculations. Everybody understand that? Yep. So it's up to you to make a table. It's up to you to record your results consistently to the same number of significant figures throughout the whole process, and to bear those significant figures in mind when you give you your overall results and the capacitor values in the report. Okay? Method, circuit diagram, all that stuff is now down to you. Alright? So that's lab one. Lab two, variable inductor. Okay. Circuit here, because you've got this inductor core, this variable. So I'm going to put an L through it. That's, the, that's our variable L. First of all, what you're going to do, have an ammeter in series. DC power supply, that does happen to be a variable one, okay, and then you're going to have a voltmeter measuring the applied voltage, and that's VDC, all right, one, apply, a known voltage to coil to measure and record the current flowing. Okay, and that's it for the DC. From that, so from measurements, find resistance of inductor. Yep. So using formulas that you know, measure the voltage or apply the, a known voltage, measure the given current, calculate the resistance. Now it doesn't matter with this experiment whether you apply the same DC voltage level as you do AC voltage level because they're completely separate experiments, doesn't really matter because it's what the outcome is. The, the, where you're going to use DC to measure resistance. AC current to measure impedances, or work out impedances at different core positions, and then from that you can back calculate, and we talked a bit about it last week, you can back calculate the inductance of the coil in Henry's. Yeah? So that's, that is on DC. 
what you're then going to do, I'm just going to make a copy of that page. And then second part is to take that eight and put an AC voltage in. Okay, remember that we need to change the meters over to from DC to AC voltage and current. Okay, again, but for each core position this time. So. For each core position, apply a known voltage to the coil, measure and record the current. From the measurements, find the impedance Z of the inductor at that core position. Because we know that as we move that core, because we got a bet we got a better or worse magnetic circuit uh, from the iron core being inside, the inductance is going to change. Which bit can't you read, Carl? What because I've put it too far up or yeah, apply an own voltage to the coil, measure and record the current flowing. From those measurements, you'll be able to work out the impedance in all the different core positions. Then, using um, impedance and resistance values, Calculate XL and um, I inductance for each core position. <coughs> In your report then, and it's up to you to make up a table to record these results, in your report then, you'll be able to use those results to investigate whether there's a linear relationship between core position and the inductance of the coil. Alright? So there's one DC measurement to take, and then there's a number of AC measurements to take in that practical. Alright? What you might like to try when you've got DC on is just move that core and you'll see that while you're moving it, you get a change in current, but as soon as you stop moving it, it settles back to the same current regardless of core position. doesn't matter. Okay? So, are you all happy with that? But that's a, a, an overview of the practical that you're going to do. And then I'll get everybody, I'll get a couple of pairs on each side over there set up and, and on their way. I'll... I'll start the capacitor off first because that does take a little bit longer waiting for the discharge to happen and then I'll get another couple of pairs switch over and there's two people who are not going to be here ne next week and who's that?